Coming to you from Lobby 7 at MIT, my name is Marsha Bolton, and this is ZigZag. Across America, the holiday season means travel. In fact, the winter holidays are traditionally the busiest travel times of the year. On a typical holiday weekend, the number of long-distance trips increases by more than 50 percent, and the vast majority of those trips are made by automobile. With soaring gasoline prices and the threat of global warming, addressing the global energy challenge has become a top priority at MIT. Hydrogen fuel cells, solar power, and exotic battery technology may all have a role to play in our transportation future. But there are also more immediate steps that can be taken to improve the efficiency of current gasoline engines. I've been working on engines and then their fuel requirements because the two are intimately connected, you know, for almost all my professional life. Our idea of a half-size engine is the best idea that I think I and my co-inventors collectively have come up with. We have been driving these sort of vehicles for a hundred years and here we can still come up with something that seems to be relatively innovative, interesting to explore. John Haywood, Leslie Bromberg and I have been working for some time on bi-fueled gasoline engines, that is engines with two fuels, as a way to improve efficiency at low cost. And these thoughts just came together, as is often the case when you come up with a new idea, in, in the thought that we could use a small amount of ethanol to uh, greatly improve the performance of a spark ignition gasoline engine. The, the liquid ethanol is squirted directly into the cylinder and there it vaporizes and it has a tremendous cooling effect. This prevents engine knock. Engine knock, which is the unwanted uh, detonation of the fuel, has been a major limitation on engine performance and efficiency. When the pressure and temperature in the cylinder get too high, the engine knocks, and that can be damaging. The, the gain in efficiency relative to uh, today's engines is about 25%. Our team, you know, is not motivated by, we want this to work and so we'll make a lot of money. We, we want it to work so that we have a substantive impact on this big problem. We're just using too much energy, too much petroleum. We're emitting too much greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. We're 5% of the world's population and, you know, we're using 25% of the world's petroleum. But there's a number that I got recently that's worse than that. We're using 40% of the world's gasoline. Now, I think that's a horrifying number. So, there's a compelling need to reduce our energy consumption in transportation, to reduce our, our gasoline consumption, so a better vehicle helps everybody. And we think this is real and it looks practical, so it's got, it's got real potential for having an impact. The half-size ethanol-boosted gasoline engine may be showing up in production vehicles within five years. You can read more about energy research initiatives at MIT in the current issue of Spectrum at web.mit.edu slash giving slash spectrum. What do string, a cell phone, a duck, Diet Coke, and Mentos have in common? They're all part of the Friday After Thanksgiving Chain Reaction, an annual event hosted by the MIT Museum. This year, over 1,500 people gathered to cheer on 47 teams, each creating a link in a spectacular chain reaction traveling the perimeter of MIT's Rockwell Cage. Four, three, two, one. The chain reaction is really any conglomeration of elements that have been put together that have stored energy. So I had this thought many years ago to ask people to start their link by the pulling of a string and to make sure that their link ended by pulling a string. The idea is very simple, that you're going to start from one point and the energy is going to transform itself through the motion of objects. You can use an infinite number of materials and different ways to store the energy. Nothing ever works the first time. And as you begin to put things together, you find, oh, that there's like this, this has to be this way, or 
this is not going to work and I have a new idea. So it's all about problem solving. Arthur is really the spirit of this program. He's really the guy who represents that wonderful intersection of art and science and engineering. And he, he really brings that spirit to this contest. I'm kind of ending on a, a thought that uh, it's to be continued. This is just like one little temporary stopping moment and it'll be continued next year. It's all part of the great flow. <laughs> the end of the fall term is a busy time at MIT. After the last final exam has been taken, MIT students start to look ahead to the holidays and to January and MIT's Independent Activities Period, or IAP. This month-long break gives students the opportunity to pursue activities that are unusual and often unique. IAP offerings are distinguished by their variety and innovative spirit. We asked MIT students what they plan to do for this year's IAP. Maybe just hang around campus and see how fun it is to be at MIT but not do work. I'll probably be at Berkeley. I'm just going there because it's called MIT. <laughs> for IAP, I'm going to do a field work in the Andes of Peru staying in a community where an Australian mining company has been operating a mine for the past 10 years, where I'm trying to understand better how communities and companies can work together in making a practice that it's not sustainable, more sustainable. I actually wrote a public service center proposal to do a network fellowship at the Lare Community Center in Lare, Kenya. We're also bringing laptops to primary schools, which is elementary schools, and so that's really exciting because we'll be able to interact with the youth there, uh, with many of them haven't even seen a computer before, and so get them familiar with computing and get them familiar with the technology and learning using computers. I might just hang around and uh, you know relax a bit in IAP. I've signed up for either bouldering or sport taekwondo, whichever one they give me. IAP is this incredible time in which students sort of decide their own ideas, follow their nose, and they're able to do whatever they want. It is a great opportunity and very different, and there's so much cool stuff going on during IAP. IAP is a lot of fun if you take advantage of it. If you're doing something particularly interesting over IAP that you would like to share with our viewers, why not make a video about it and submit it to ZigZag? For more information, contact ZigZag at MIT.edu. We look forward to featuring more stories produced by members of the MIT community. That's all for now. For ZigZag, I'm Marsha Bolton. I'll see you next time.